It's uh, Saturday, July 30th, and uh, welcome to Everyday Talk 24-7, and uh, great to have you along. I'm going to today look at anger, our anger. We've been talking about how God doesn't treat us as our sins deserve, does not deal with us in anger, but with mercy and compassion. We'll look at that in the last three videos. But now what about the poor behavior, the that we have, that other people have towards us that makes us angry. And there's no question about it. We do sin against one another. You are sinned against by other people, especially those close to you. So what is the response that God wants? Is it a response to be angry? Or is it to follow his lead and not treat people as their sins deserve? Which is counterintuitive, of course. But that's what God's words and ways are. But rather, when we rely on our own anger to solve problems, when we do the opposite of what God does, when we treat people as we think their sins deserve, that creates a mess that blows up with us. And what it does create is an addiction to anger. An addiction to anger. The American Heritage Dic Dictionary has this definition of addiction. And I've just just tweaked it a bit so that it fits the situation with anger. And I think you'll, you'll see how close it is. So the, def the definition is this, a condition involving the use of a substance or an engagement in a behavior such as anger in which a person has strong cravings, is unable to stop or limit the activity and continues the activity despite harmful consequences and experiences distress upon stopping, discontinuing the activity. And that's what happens. When we get angry, our anger lashes out. Nobody is helped. We're not helped. The person we're trying to help isn't helped. And then we're upset when we can't continue to be angry anymore because the other person deserves our angry response. This is how anger becomes addictive. Because like a substance abuse problem, it offers an immediate relief from relational problems, but never solves them, actually makes them worse. Anger only increases the stress of these relational issues and problems. The addictive nature of human anger demands increasing doses of anger be applied, which lead to more distress, which leads to more craving for the anger. That's why it's an addictive cycle. Anger is something as an attribute of God, a communicable attribute that God wants us to have. But he wants us to take that anger and use it to bring honor to him and not to fix things our way. So anger is appropriate, but only when we use it in a way that honors God. Otherwise, as James says, our human anger will not bring about the righteous life that God desires. And won't help us either. See, in this sense, this craving of anger, this addiction of anger, is the goal of the devil's anger management program. He wants to create in us an anger when there's a craving that can never be satisfied. And the enemy can never be happier when he sees us giving into these cravings and they're not, they're not achieving the results that we want. And so we get more angry, creates more relational distress, which creates more anger. And the devil, at that point, the enemy of our souls, they're all cheering because it's exactly the game plan. So what is God's alternative? Well, not surprisingly, it's, or I'm sorry, surprisingly, it's, counterintuitive. There's no surprise about it. It's counterintuitive to our natural reaction. It's a faith response. The first four verses of Proverbs 15 point to the power of gentleness to heal our anger addiction. You see, that's exactly the opposite from the way we would think of things to be solved. But God's answer is the power of gentleness. And we have to accept this by faith. 
I'm going to read from Bruce Walkie's translation just because it's very vivid and very close to the Hebrew. So, a gentle answer turns back wrath. It pushes it aside. It propitiates it. It moves out of the scene. It doesn't just blot it out, but it takes care of it. But a painful word stirs up anger. The tongue of the wise adorns knowledge, but the mouth of fools gushes folly. The eyes of the Lord are in every place, watching vigilantly evil people and good people. And then verse 4, the soothing of the tongue is a tree of life, but perversity in it fractures the spirit. So they're, they're the contrasts that are set up here for us. So let's take a look at these. In typical Hebrew fashion, in this unit of four verses, four lines, the first lines tell us are connected, and they make a point. So we're going to look at lines from the first lines of verse 1, verse 2, and verse 4. And they tell us what a gentle response does. So this is what a gentle response does. A gentle answer turns back wrath. A gentle answer turns back wrath. The tongue of the wise adorns knowledge. In other words, knowledge is built up. Knowledge is encouraged. The soothing of the tongue is a tree of life. The soothing of the tongue is a tree of life. So those are the three positive things that gentleness does as opposed to anger. You can see those are positive things, not negative things exact opposite of the craving for anger and what the enemy wants. On the negative side, the flip side, what does addictive anger do? What is the enemy's plan? Well, from verse 1, a painful, this painful word of anger it stirs up more wrath in the person that we're talking to. Verse 2, the mouth of fools gush, gush forth folly. A fool is a person who's acting like there is no God. So when we pursue anger to solve problems, we're like that fool gushing folly. And then from verse 4, this perversity of spirit, it fractures or crushes the spirit of the person we're trying to help. So you see, that's what negative, addictive anger does. It stirs up anger. It brings more folly and discouragement, and it fractures and curses, and crushes the spirit of the person we're talking to. And, but these, these four verses are held together by verse 3, which is in the, kind of in the middle here, because that tells us what God does. What does God do? The eyes of the Lord are in every place, watching vigilantly evil people and good people. In other words, God is not missing anything. His vengeance will, will solve these problems. Our job is just to do what he's called us to do. Leave the anger management, leave the justice problem to him. Because verse 3 is telling us he's going to take care of it. I can trust him. So to end the cravings, the addiction, the continual lust for more anger, we must turn to God in faith, believing that he sees what is wrong, that he will make it right, that I can trust him to do what I can't. I can honor him and leave him to work out the consequences. I don't have to inflict anger on this person. I need to be engaged in doing what God says they should be about. I want to engage in that gentle answer to stop wrath. I want to have my tongue adorn what is wise and just and be a blessing to this person. I want my words to be a tree of life. See, now I'm pulling this person back to truth, back to what is good. And my own addictive behavior is being stopped and being replaced by not all this negative feedback, but by the positive response of a loving, faithful God choosing to honor his word through the power of gentleness. That's how we can stop addictive anger so it doesn't consume us and all those around us. Give me some thoughts and feedback on this. I'd, I'd love to hear your thoughts on it. And uh, you have a great day tomorrow. Lord willing, we'll see you on Monday. 
Uh, check us out every day. Talk 247com And uh, if you haven't subscribed, turn on post notifications. Videos will come right to you. Thank you so much for all your comments, feedback, support. Uh, it's really a big blessing for me to be engaged. Lord willing, you have a good weekend. We'll see you Monday. Bye-bye.